Hi guys, it's Paul here and I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on making a cloverleaf antenna. So this is the antenna we're going to be making. This is actually my one, we're making this uh, antenna for my son. And here we have a skew planner. So basically the same thing except it's got four clovers as opposed to the three. Um, we'll need one of these connectors and you can pick one of these up from eBay. Uh, you're also going to need some wire. Um, I think this is about 08 millimeters or thereabouts. It's actually just basically a... Uh, electrical wire and what you need to do is strip away the plastic around it which is pretty straightforward I just use a sharp knife and a pair of pliers will easily uh, pull the wire out and that's pretty much all there is to it so go ahead and do all three okay what I did forget to mention is you need to get this information from the rcexplorer.se website and this is David's website uh, what you need to do is firstly click on the DIY link and once you click on that go to DIY circular polarized antenna uh, my son actually found this website great information here um, click on the cloverleaf antenna and then take your time to actually read through this page it's got some really great information there now what we're doing is building a 5.8 gigahertz antenna in this instance so I'm going to be tuning mine to channel 8 and what I need is a frequency which in this instance is going to be 59.45 megahertz so what we need to do is enter this in in two sections of David's website what you'll do is enter this information in two sections on David's website in this instance we're doing the actual bend which is 12.9 but there's also another section that you will actually enter in the same number and what it'll do is give you the length at which you need to cut the wire so what I'm doing here is setting my vernier to 12.91 or thereabouts and this will give me the location at which I need to bend uh, the two bends on each wire. And basically line it up with your vernier and butt your pliers up against it and fold it up. And that's pretty much all there is to it. You just want to keep this bend as tight as possible and make sure you get it square. And you want to do this to both sides. Okay, and the next thing you need to do once you've done that is basically... Uh, do the um, curve at the other end or the radius and the way I do that I just use a pair of pliers and basically kink it up slowly so I can get a nice even curve and once I've done that I'll basically tweak it by hand and that's pretty much all there is to it and make sure you get that angle right okay so basically the next step is the coaxial cable and what I do is use a sharpie knife and I basically cut until the point that I can feel that it's hitting the actual um, the braiding on the coax and then just basically separate it and remove the outer plastic and that's pretty straightforward so there you can see you can see the coax is actually exposed the next thing I do is once again using a sharp knife is what I will do is actually go through and uh, separate the braiding and what I want to do is separate it into three equal portions so what you want to do is basically twist the ends of each one of them and then basically have it set up so they're equally spaced apart and that's pretty much all there is to it. Okay, the same deal as before, working close to the um, outer core that you removed, probably about a mil or so away. Uh, do the same and cut away until you can expose the inner core of the coax. Next what we do is uh, tin the outer portions of your coax, your three ground planes, and then what we want to do is also tin the inner core of the coax also. Next we want to do the same with the wires that we've bent up and basically uh, one side of it what you want to do is go through all the way um, tin most of the bottom and then what you want to do is tin the tip this is the part that's going to connect up with the core and you want to do that with all three of these uh, wires. Okay this is the fun part now um, I'm having a little bit of drum drums doing this at the moment because I've got the iPhone in the way and I'm holding it with my right hand and trying to solder it with my left hand. And I'm right-handed, so um, hence why I'm having such difficulty trying to coordinate my hand. But basically what you do is hold uh, the wire in place at a 45 degree angle. You can pretty much eyeball this. It isn't too hard. And afterwards you can also tweak it so it's not a drama. You can actually bend and manipulate it in place. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So what you want to do is solder in place all three um, wires and then once you've actually done that then you'll actually solder the core with the center portion of your circular polarized antenna 
So there you go, that's pretty much done. Uh, all you need to do is trim away the tip of the cloverleaf antenna and you are pretty much finished the top section of the cloverleaf and now we go on to the bottom section. So what you want to do now is slip on the sleeve and also the heat shrink and then work out exactly how much of the wire you need to strip away and that's pretty straightforward. You can pretty much eyeball this and the procedure is pretty much as per what you did with the cloverleaf top portion of the antenna. Once you've done that, basically pull the, um, the braiding backwards and then work out exactly how much of the tip you need to expose. Now I actually tin the tip of this, and I'm not sure if you actually need to do this or not, but it's just something that I do. Now the next thing I do is solder the tip in place, and I'm not sure if you need to do this or not, but I just do this for extra security for myself. Next what you want to do is put a little plastic uh, white clip in place, and then screw in the end cap. And once you've uh, screwed in the end cap, what you want to do is trim away some of the braid, that's just so you don't have too much overhang, it just makes it look a little bit neater. Slip the sleeve back down again, and what you want to do next is crimp it. Now I'm using a pair of pliers here. Um, I'm assuming there is a proper crimping tool for this process, but I don't actually have one. And this does seem to do the job. Once you've done that, slip the heat shrink over the end, and heat shrink it down. And that's pretty much all there is to it. And your cloverleaf antenna is done, and pretty much ready to go. So there you go, cloverleaf antenna done. Hope you found that useful. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.